Hi, this is Miles Marie, the soldier of Mary. I want to talk about the possible influence of the evil one at the apparitions of Garabandal. And I'm going to start off with a surprising quotation, which is on the thumbnail for this video, because in the biggest book or biggest study on Garabandal, she went in haste to the mountains. Uh, the author gives a quotation from Conchita, where she acknowledged the presence of the devil at work in Garabandal. Here's the quote from book two of She Went in Haste to the Mountain. And in what happened to us during those years, I see the work of the devil too. I remember, for example, the voice that we heard in the great darkness. And the other day, on which Loli and Jacinta intended to jump down from the choir loft of the church. At the time, I wasn't seeing the Virgin, and I was near the main altar. I remember that they came down and touched my face, asking me, Are you Conchita? On that day, it certainly seems to have been the devil. End of quote. So I'm going to look over the contents of that quote and the things that she's referring to. But to begin with, I want to back up and talk about the fact that the accusation is out there that the entirety of the phenomenon of Garabandal is demonic. I know when I was a youngster, when I was maybe uh, 19, 20, and I first really learned about Garabandal, there was a very interesting website on the internet, Unity Publishing, Unity Publishing. It was written by a man called Rick Salvato. He's now passed away. He passed away really untimely at a young age. We pray for his soul. A really great man, a really learned man, Rick Salvato. And he had a really, really impressive website, Unity Publishing, which explored different apparitions. And he was really at the forefront of apparition information in a time when there were very few websites on these subjects. So he, uh, he actually reached his conclusion that Garabandal was demonic. There is a snapshot of his website. You can still visit something of what was like his website nowadays. But in my memory, there was a lot more to his website. There were a lot more pages on Garabandal and a lot more evidence suggesting it might be demonic. He, he offers a number, of, a number of suggestions as to why it might be demonic. And, and I'll look at those a little bit as well in this video. And another thing to add, along with Rick suggesting this, I remember at seminary, another seminarian who was training alongside of me, he likewise thought that Garabandal was possibly demonic because essentially there's stuff there that cannot be explained. It seems like Garabandal simply cannot be dismissed as entirely human. I know that, that the church or the church authorities said not constant with supernatural. The, the apparition doesn't, doesn't show signs of the supernatural or, or that was the local bishop's decision. But remember, the demonic is not supernatural. It's preternatural. So that judgment from the diocese leaves quite open the possibility that the diocese concluded that the apparitions were demonic. I know that hasn't been made public, but certainly that's a possibility from that statement. Because like I said, there's phenomena in Garabandal that simply cannot be dismissed as, as purely human. And one possible explanation is that the apparitions were from the evil one. Now, let me jump in here with my own personal view, which is I don't think that the devil was behind the entirety of Garabandal. I think Our Lady was there. But like Conchita admits in the quote that I read out, the devil was involved. The devil was definitely involved. To what degree? Perhaps that's, that's what we can debate. The devil has been active in many apparition sites. Usually the devil follows after 
apparitions. There's a lot of stuff written about Lourdes and how there were a number of fraudulent apparition claims at Lourdes, demonic apparition claims at Lourdes, maybe frauds as well, after after the apparitions, the real apparitions had ended. Certainly, Ezkyoga, I've got a video about Ezkyoga, that seems like there was a demonic hijack. Maybe, maybe Palma de Troya, there was a demonic hijack if it wasn't just a straightforward fraud that came later on. Yeah, the devil, the evil one, has been involved in apparition sites. And Conchita admits giving a couple of accounts of events in which she thinks that the devil was active. So let me now explain um, some of these things that Conchita refers to. Or maybe for before that, back to Unity Publishing. One of the things that Rick was particularly focused in on was that the apparitions began with a, with a sin, the stealing of the apples. And the idea is, well, were the girls in the state of mortal sin? By their own admission, had they stolen these apples, entered into the state of mortal sin, and then had some kind of apparition, that would not that would not um, suggest a very good beginning to the apparitions. And as we know, as anyone who's involved with exorcisms will tell you, it's mortal sin that attracts the demon more than anything else. So the response to that, which I better give a response to that, because it is a powerful argument, and for a number of years. I was kind of caught up with that argument, thinking that was pretty strong thing against Garibandau. Well, to answer that, to answer that, you look at, for example, uh, José Luis Saavedra, look at his book, uh, the recent book on Garibandau, and he tries to explore about how the children realized that they had stolen the apples and that it was wrong, that they started throwing stones towards where they imagine the devil was on the left hand side and kind of made a contrition saying sorry for their sins so his idea is that they had uh, they had made an act of contrition maybe a perfect act of contrition and also in his book as a number of other books have demonstrated the crime of robbing apples was was not really much of a crime all of the gardens had apple trees in them and moreover, the apples were pretty pathetic. They were tiny little pathetic things that the climate of that part of Spain produces. So it wasn't like, you know, St. Augustine and the, the pears that he steals and feeds to the pigs that were kind of good pears. These were really pathetic apples and everyone had apples in their little little gardens. So so um, Jose Luis, Father Jose Luis, he manages to interview um, someone from the police from that era or to give their opinion on on the nature of this crime and he says you know this wasn't this was really nothing this was really nothing it was a silly girlish game and they were in doing it for the fun of it probably from catholic moral theology it wouldn't have been a mortal sin it would have been a venial sin and so the idea that they were then really opened up to the evil one not so not so certain and especially if you take father jose luis suggesting that they made an act of contrition that throwing the stones and they say to themselves oh the angel will be a very upset the devil will be will be pleased because we've stolen something remember they're pretty simple girls also so that was rick's first uh claim as to why the apparitions were likely to be demonic i think that one can be dismissed so let's move on now to Conchita's quote, which maybe I should put back on the screen for us now, because she's referring to, in particular, two events. The second of these, unfortunately, the one about jumping down, Loli and Hathinta jumping down from the choir loft at the top of the church when, when Conchita wasn't seeing the Virgin at the main altar, and the, the girls touched her and they said this rather bizarre phrase. This one, unfortunately, is not recorded. It's not really recorded. We know that the girls were climbing up by the choir loft and we know that they were therefore banned from going into the church during the apparitions and that Our Lady obeyed that and they never went, to the, went into the church again. But there's really, this is the only documented 
documented uh, account of that event in which she says she thinks the girls were seeing a demon and that the demon was involved. But the first one, the first one, the voice. Now that one is well documented. It's in She Went in Haste to the Mountain. And in fact, it seems to have taken place twice that they hear this voice. And I'm going to jump to the page now from She Went in Haste to the Mountain. So hopefully we might be able to read the account together. So to put this into context, Father Luis Andreu has just died recently. And on the previous apparition, the children have spoken with him. The deceased Father Luis, his soul, has appeared to them. And he's spoken to them, conveyed some information about them to them, which he's, they have then shared with his still living brother, Ramon. And after this, this reunion, this prayerful time, where Our Lady allows them to speak in an unusual way with someone who's departed, she then says to them the following little message, telling them that the following day they would hear a voice, but that they shouldn't be afraid and that they should follow the voice. So then, and I'm reading now from the page, on the next day, and at the same time as on the previous day, that is, at nightfall, the Most Holy Virgin appeared to the four of us, and for several minutes she was smiling very much, and she didn't say anything to us. After a few minutes, darkness came upon us, and we heard a voice call us, which elsewhere we're told that the voice is saying, Come to me, come to me. Then Marikuth said, Tell us who you are. If you don't, we will go home. While we were hearing the voice, it was very dark, and we didn't see the Virgin. But afterwards she came, and it became very light, and she said to us, Don't be afraid. And she spoke to us for a while. And that night was the first night that she kissed us, one by one. And then she left. And then we're told in another a few pages later that there's another occasion. It's like that this voice happens another occasion. And on that occasion, it's other bystanders notice that the children are asking rather bizarre questions, saying, who are you? What are you, what are you doing here? What, what are you? They describe the voice as hissing, hissing. So there are a number of explanations. Bear in mind, Conchita, in the earlier quote that we've just read out, said that she thinks that the hissing voice in the darkness was the devil. This is where the whole thing gets confusing, because if we take the account seriously, Our Lady is saying, don't be afraid. Our Lady is saying, this, follow, follow the voice. You know, very weird. If Our Lady, or well, is she in cooperation with the devil for some reason? It's, that's very odd. Maybe we'd have to say that this report in She Went in Ace of the Mountain is partly mistaken in this testimony part if the later testimony of, of Conchita saying it was probably diabolical is to be accepted. Maybe, maybe there's a conflation of a number of different apparitions. It's much easier to imagine a diabolical apparition as being an instance where, like, like Conchita described, where, where she doesn't see the Virgin and where something strange occurs and they hear a voice and it's all dark. You know, that, that would sound to me like a case of a possible demonic apparition in the midst of, in the midst of genuinely, usually, appearances of Our Lady. This one, taking this uh, account that I've just read, with Our Lady kind of saying, you know, follow it, listen to it, don't be afraid. 
yeah, that doesn't sound like Our Lady is setting it up to be the devil. And actually, this chapter of She Went in Taste of the Mountain includes a number of explanations arguing that it was probably the voice of God, like the God the Father speaking to them that provokes fear. Now, that sounds quite a reasonable explanation. Or also, there's the other explanation that it actually is Father Luis Sandreau. And I think that Hathinta... It quotes Hathinta of, or Mary Lowley as suggesting that that was her view, that it was probably him speaking to them. But why he was speaking to them hissing, saying, come to me, come to me, is rather odd as well. But anyway, it's arguing it's not the devil. And so this chapter suggests, without considering it to be the evil one, suggests to one one a man in heaven and one God the Father. And then later on again, God the Father is again offered as the most likely explanation for this this voice. But then there's Conchita's statement about it about her thinking it was probably the devil. Maybe it's just because looking back, Conchita is confused about the whole event. It was certainly very confusing, a very strange event in the history of Garabandau. And it's it's largely been forgotten this this event. It reminds me, I think I heard someone anecdotally saying about Medjugorje that there was an instance when apparently the devil turned up and Our Lady said, oh, you shouldn't have seen that, or maybe I'm being a caricature here, but there was a kind of instance when the evil one appeared and Our Lady said, oh, I'm very sorry about that. Uh, the devil got in. This sounds like a bit similar, although I don't believe in Medjugorje. This sounds like another kind of switch, switch going on. Very strange. I think that... I think maybe maybe Conchita is she mistaken? No, I think maybe she's mistaken to say it was the devil, or or maybe these commentaries are mistaken to try and explain to us that it isn't the devil and it was the voice of God. But anyway, that's one instance that the evil one was definitely present, according to Conchita, at Garabandau. It's a confusing event, I know. But there's a few more instances when the evil one seems to have had an involvement. Again, Conchita tells us this. Conchita tells us that at a particular time in her life after the apparitions had finished and when she wasn't sure what to do with her life, she feel, she says that she felt like she was experiencing a lot of demonic oppression. It's a small thing. That's a small anecdote, I know. But there's another instance where the occasion that the Mary Loli and Con Mary Loli and Hathinta and Mary Cruz deny the apparitions. Conchita says that was the work of the devil. That was the work of the devil. The devil was working in them. And you can see that on the screen here, the little quote. The devil was working in them when they denied the apparitions. And even more, Conchita says that that Mary Cruz, to this day, the devil is in charge of her in a certain sense. The devil is... Uh, the devil has his way with her because she continues to deny the apparitions. And that's as a result of the work of the devil. So she puts the devil, explains that in terms of the devil's influence. So that's just a couple of instances where Conchita thinks that the devil had some involvement, some presence, activity at Garabandal. Of course, she thinks overall it was Our Lady appearing to her. But that there were some instances that were a little bit strange, even... Perhaps Father Luis Andreu is rather odd that he would speak to them from the grave. That doesn't usually happen in in apparitions. But if I was pushed, I could probably find an approved apparition where that kind of thing happened. Like, for example, St. Faustina has some apparitions of some departed souls coming to speak to her. Okay, I think that's everything on, on this topic of the devil being present at Garabandau. It's certainly out there. If you look on the internet, there's a fair number of people that think that the whole of the apparitions of Garabandal were the work of the evil one, a diabolical distraction from Fatima. Because Garabandal doesn't mention consecration to the Immaculate Heart. Garabandal doesn't mention the consecration of Russia. Garabandal does, uh, doesn't uh, mention those things. The triumph of the Immaculate Heart is, is not an aspect of Garabandal, so maybe it's a distraction from, from Fatima. Some people argue that. Also, some people think that the events at Garabandal are slightly weird. You know, the children being in these strange frozen poses 
uh, like statues. People think, well, what, what good is that for? Is that really God working that? But then there are cases of saints. Saint Teresa of Avila, we know famously, is in that frozen ecstatic position when she is, what is it? She's cooking some, cooking some, frying some eggs or something over the fire. And, and she all of a sudden, or pouring some oil into a frying pan. And all of a sudden she sees, sees an ecstasy in quite an unusual position. And there's other saints, uh, Alexandrina Costa. I think she has some unusual poses in her ecstasies. So I don't know. It's certainly a claim out there that the Garabandal apparitions are explained by the working of the evil one. I don't think I'd go down that route myself. I think that genuinely it was Our Lady visiting the children at Garabandal. But that like in all holy activities... The evil one does tend to try and insert himself, trying to bring about disharmony, disunity, temptation. You know, there were some discords between the children, weren't there, at Carabandau, especially when they were trying to invent their own little miracle. You know, there's there's a whole story about that, about 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 Hathinta and and Conchita perhaps conspiring to find a buried statue to say it was Our Lady, or drinking the levitation powder that Conchita gives them, which is actually just some kind of toothpaste. Maybe the evil one was behind those temptations. Anyway, it's been an interesting subject, and I'm sure that you all have comments on the matter. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.